So we left off the last video. The bottom frame board is glued in place, but not the top one. So it's time to start working on the infill. I'm going to try to use this big piece of sycamore that is pretty gnarly as the fill to go into the, uh, the ends of the beds. Um, it's too wide to go through my planer. I'm going to have to cut it, unfortunately. But uh, I'm going to play with it. I don't know what it's going to do when I plane it. It may curl up like a pretzel. You can see in the background I have the um, bed frame clamped to the table. It's centered and square with the table. And on the end of the table, on the right end, is a board that projects out and it is square with the bed frame and centered and on the very end of it is a pencil mark and that's my radius point and that's how I'm, what I'm using to um, mark out these pie shaped pieces. So I started planing this board and it's super tough. It's bogging my planer down because of that big knot. So I brought it over here and kind of halfway marked it out so I can remove all the wood I don't need. Give my planer a break so it won't have to work so hard. I'm just hoping this knot will kind of stay together until I get it down to a half inch thick. I've been fitting these panels and the one I was the most excited about with the big knot I don't think I'm going to use because it just looks like a big knot. But uh, it's a lot of planing. They're one inch thick plus and I need to plane them down to half inch. The right way to do this would be with the bandsaw but I don't have the right blade so to minimize my planing I kind of kind of cut them to a rough shape first and then I don't have so much wood to move, remove but I've already filled up a garbage can with uh, wood chips but I'm getting close so all the infill pieces for the headboard are made the two little ones I still have to trim to final shape now I will stand the headboard up take the top off which is not glued it's just sitting there and I'll slide these in one by one make sure they're all going to fit and I'll have to start from the little ones toward the middle. When I get to the middle piece, if it still fits, I will use it as a template and replace that big knot. I'm not crazy about that big knot. And if they all fit, or when I get them all to fit, I'm sure I'll have to do some trimming. I will take them back out, sand them, and finish them, and put a little bitty bevel on each edge, and put some finish on them, and then we'll be ready to glue this up. And I'll start on the, the tailboard. It's a little smaller, so it'll be a little easier to find pieces that fit. So I got everything put together dry. This is a mock-up. And it turned out the middle piece was a little loose. So what I did was I just I trimmed a little bit off the bottom, and I came and tried it. And I trimmed a little more, and I trimmed a little more. And when I got the right amount trimmed off the bottom, it slid down as tight. The angle's pretty dang good. So I'm going to use this and recreate a new piece for the middle. It just needs to be a little longer. And then we can take it apart and sand up the pieces and finish them individually. So on the headboard, I've got all the pieces sprayed with a coat of lacquer. They need another one. And the middle piece, I replaced the piece that had a knot. And I had this piece, and it's just a little bit too narrow, so I'm gluing on a little piece. And once it's sanded, I don't think you'll be able to see it at all. And then the, the bottom, I don't know what it's called, tailboard, the bottom of the bed. I've got them all cut except for the king plank. So I've got to mark it and cut it out. And uh, the trick is, with this, is to leave it long. And then you can keep planing and fitting and planing and fitting because it's a wedge shape. And as it comes in, when you get it where you like it, then you can trim the top to uh, length so pretty hard to mess up as long as you leave a few extra inches so to mark the pieces for the tail of the bed I pretty much use the pieces for the head of the bed and they're just shorter but when I get to this last one kind of a head scratcher so what I did was I took my framing square and I scribed put it on the edge and I scribed a two inch offset there and a two inch offset here and then this is kind of like marking ceramic tiles and then I put the board back in the middle or the, the piece I'm going to cut and I put that two inch offset back here and back here so that gave me these two lines now they probably won't be exactly but they'll be close and I have all this much room to keep refining this little taper until it fits correctly 
loose. So I'll trim the bottom so we can go further down and tighten up. Now it's, it's touching on the top, not the bottom, so I'll plan more on the top. Let's see if I can get it to slide down more. So I ended up trimming it one five different times, but I have now a perfect fit. Now I can cut it to length and I don't have to worry about it being too small. So we got a good dry fit here. We're going to take it apart, put some glue on the joint and put it back together. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this particular hardware set, but this little bracket has to be mortised into the end of the rail and boy there's not a lot of room for error. I'm going to have to make some sort of jig. Um, I'm definitely going to use the router, but there's not enough surface here to balance the router on, so uh, I might have to work on this. Make some sort of jig to hold that router up. So I made this jig to fit over the end of the stretcher bed rail, and this is the same thickness as the bed rail, so I added a little piece of cardboard to give me some clearance. And I can slide this over the end of the rail, put two C-clamps on it, it's going to be very sturdy. So that's step one to using the router to cut that joint. I'm using my little router this time and I do have a new bit in it so it's very sharp. And I clamp this board to this board and I ran the router down the, down the side like this is a guide. And I measured so it is 38 millimeters and I make sure the depth is set for the router bit is correct. So if I go up top where I got my little thing, I got it like this so I can work downhill. I need to mark 38 centimeters around the perimeter of the where the thing's going to go and put some sort of guide. Okay, so this square, this is the stringer, this is just a spacer block. This square is the outline of the embed and 38 more inches, 38 more centimeters, millimeters, millimeters is this square, no I'm sorry, this square so that's if I put the outside edge of the router along that line I should have the outside edge of the cut on this line so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna glue and staple these down and we're gonna give it a shot Working up here is like working on your bench with all the tools on the floor. It's kind of a pain. So I cut the first one and it's just a little bit looser than I was hoping. So I got a piece of cardboard and I'm going to try to keep the cardboard between the guide and the router on this go around. And I think that may make it perfect. Drop cardboard. Okay. I'm ready to put the hardware on but before I do I got to remove some wood inside there because these little dog things need to go in there and slide down so I've got it marked where it needs to go and I got the router bit and the little router it's a sharp bit set to the right depth I think I need to clamp a guide on here to have it cut straight and in order to start and stop I'm just going to try to eyeball that. I'll do one and see how it comes out. This would be a perfect job for a quarter inch plunge router. But I don't think they make that. I don't, anyway, I don't have one. I just have to hold it. So 
I made the guide. The guide is nothing more than a uh, piece of wood with a notch cut in it. And then I had to adjust it. So I have three little strips of cardboard taped here to get the, get it in the right spot. Other than that, it works pretty good. So I've built some beds in the past. I've built three beds in the past. And I've always bought the cheap hardware, which is basically like an angle iron that's screwed to the face here and left a piece sticking out and then it screwed to the face of the rail. And this time I thought I'd up my game and use this mortise hardware, but I don't like it. It, it, it doesn't lock up, it doesn't get tight. So even with this, even if I get this fitting perfect and get this part fitting perfect in the rail, it's going to be rattling. This is a piece of junk. These are expensive too. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit these with a hammer and see if I can't change the shape a little bit, make them tighter. So, I'm pretty disappointed with this hardware from Rockler. So, these brackets that go on the rails, they had a little the rivet or the back side of this. So, I had to drill two little holes really shallow and now they fit on there, okay? These screws are going to go in end grain. I don't, I don't like this at all. I'm going to um, I'm going to get them all to fit and put all the screws in, and then I'm going to take them off and I'm going to set them in epoxy. Cause I just I don't know. A little boy in his bed, man, this thing's going to see some bouncing, and then it all to be hopefully willy proof. I got the cap board <clears throat> or the trim for the front and the back of the bed, and I've got this nice bull nose router bit doesn't feel particularly sharp to my finger but I haven't used it very much it should be sharp but anyway this doesn't have a guide bearing on it so I'm gonna need to set this up in the router table so I can use the fence on the router table for a guide and I'm gonna cut this um, shape around the perimeter of that these two top trim boards I have my Makita router mounted in my homemade router lift it's uh works pretty good actually it's a linear bearing with a hunk of wood bolted to it and a router strapped to that and the height adjustment is a piece of an old um, screw jack it's a acme thread with an acme nut and it is operated through the top so i'm going to drop the router in place using a router table to uh, do something like this could easily be a video all by itself because there's so much going on um, I kind of planned on making this cut in two passes, which would have been better. But it's that's as far forward as my fence would go with the slots in my tabletop. And I guess, you know, in hindsight, I could have clamped a board to the front of it or something. But anyway, I made it one pass. I went slow. came out pretty good. Um, it's kind of an art. Every time you stop feeding the board through there, you get a, it shows up in the finished product. So it requires a lot of sanding to get it looking good again. And uh, I just don't use this thing enough to really be really good at it, but I'm good. Okay, well those came out pretty well. A little, man, every time you breathe, you get a little bump. A little misalignment here and a couple other little dings, but all of it is within sanding. I'm going to call this pretty good. So I hit the bed rails with a quarter inch roundover bit, all four sides, just to make it a little more user friendly and uh, try to maybe protect some shins one day. I'm cutting a real small profile on the edge of this board. I'm doing both sides and then I'm going to put it on the table saw and rip the little profile off. It's a, uh, it's the little piece, the resulting piece is too small to hold and route it at the same time. You gotta route it on a bigger board and then rip off what you need. So when I was building my house, I used this uh, this particular quirk bead, I believe it's called, a lot. 
So I ended up finding this router at a garage sale for 10 bucks, and I mounted it in here. And I don't have the wrenches for this router, so it's a real pain to change the bit. And I built a little guard for it, and it's been in this router ever since, what, uh, 18 years I've had it. This bit in this router, and I'll probably never change it. I'll probably leave it in there until the router burns up. It is getting kind of, the bearings are getting kind of uh, raggedy, so it gets real hot if you run it for long. But I just used it to run this little um, this little strip of decorative mold. So it's it's such a little thing. I usually cut the bead on a big board or a larger board, and then rip it off because it's so you can't hold these little bitty boards. But uh, this is going to go under the top like that one. And I'm going to pop it with some little brad nails, and then the bed structurally is finished. After that, it's just uh, sanding and finishing. Getting close. Oh no, i got to do the bed slats, but that's no big deal. We had all the kids come over for my wife's birthday during the coronavirus lockdown. Okay, so all the wood on the bed is assembled, except for the bed slats, which I'll have to go up and add it and get something for um, put the little trim on top and I plugged the holes with some little bungs and sanded them and gave it all a light sanding and if you remember it already had coats of lacquer on it before I put it together. To deal with the inherent wobble because of the hardware I picked I made the little ledger strip that holds the bed slats. It's just a tad longer than the bed rail so it kind of pokes out it puts a little bind on the whole thing so I guess theoretically it's making the headboard and the tailboard lean inward a little bit but it's not enough to show but it takes the wobble out so I'm pretty happy with that fix. Okay, I dropped in five bed slats out of some very straight grain pine foreign. They're really strong and I'm gonna put a sheet of plywood on here because nobody uses box springs anymore. They all get bed in a box. It's just a foam thing so it needs a plywood bottom. One bed for Willie, complete. Came out pretty good, I think, in my own humble opinion. It's in, it's in the lower mode right now. It gets a little bigger, they can raise it up about eight inches and it'll look more like a normal bed. But I think they'll be happy with this, hopefully.